These three buckets contain everything you need in order to become the wealthiest and most likable person possible. Don't believe me? Don't worry, you will by the end of this video. Does the name Peter Kaufman ring a bell to you? How about Charlie Munger? Peter Kaufman is the author of Poor Charlie's Almanac, the incredible book about Charlie Munger's wit and wisdom. Some call it the greatest book ever written on business, mental models and life in general. But this video is not about Charlie Munger, no. This is about Peter Kaufman and a talk he gave to a group of economic students at Cal Poly Pomona a few years ago. During his talk, he introduced his three buckets. The speech is so profound that I haven't been able to get it out of my head since I first discovered it. And the more I think about it, the more I realize how important it really is. Not only is it one of the most inspiring talks I've heard, but it's already changing how I view life. And I'll explain exactly why. But before we get into that, let's take a quick look at who Peter Kaufman is and what he does. Peter Kaufman is the chairman and CEO of Glen Air, a California-based manufacturer of electrical and fiber optic components. I know, sounds pretty unsexy, but during his 40-year-long business career, he's accumulated a wealth of knowledge by surrounding himself with masterminds like Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. Kaufman has been a longtime friend of Munger and they serve on the board together at Wesco Financial. Wesco does $12 billion in annual revenue and is owned by Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway. So what makes Kaufman Kaufman so special and how did he manage to get a seat at the table with two of the greatest investors the world has ever known? Kaufman is a big believer in having a multidisciplinary approach to thinking. And similar to Buffett and Munger, he advocates studying a variety of fields in order to get a holistic understanding of the world. A frog that has lived in a well its entire life knows nothing of the mighty ocean. By only studying one discipline and ignoring the others, we create blind spots. And blind spots are our biggest enemies in life. Why? Because they're the main sources for our mistakes. When we don't understand something, we make poor decisions. So to minimize the number of blind spots in his life, Kaufman decided to study all the big ideas from different disciplines, including physics, biology, and psychology. He found a science magazine called Discover Magazine, which included an interesting interview with a scientist every month. Kaufman printed out 12 years of Discover Magazine archives and spent an hour reading them every morning. It took him six months to go through 144 articles, and by the end of it, he realized that everything in the universe is connected. That's how he discovered his three magic buckets, which serve as a key mental model for his thinking. What does every statistician need in order to draw conclusions? A large and relevant data set, right? Why? Because a conclusion derived from a large and relevant data set simply can't be wrong. The only way it can be wrong is if the sample size is too small or if the sample itself is irrelevant to what you're analyzing. Okay, so what's the deal with the buckets? Bucket number one is the universe. It's the beginning of time. It's 13.7 billion years. It's physics and geology. It's the stars, galaxies, and planets that make up the inorganic universe we live in. Bucket number two is biology and the existence of living creatures. It's 3.5 billion years of life on planet Earth, the place we call home. It's plants and animals, all of whom are made out of organic compounds. Bucket number three is the most important of them all. It's 20,000 years of recorded human history. It's the human consciousness. It's how we think and feel as individuals and how we connect with each other as social beings. Why are these buckets relevant? Well, Kaufman had an ambitious goal to figure out how everything in the world works. Yes, everything. And he wanted to find a way to describe it with just two words. I'm telling you, this guy is kind of nuts. Let's look at bucket number one, physics. Is there a way to describe how everything works in physics? Newton's third law of motion says that for every action, there will always be an equal and opposite reaction. What does this mean? So, I have this AirPods case. If I press the case down on the table with a certain level of force, the table will push back with exactly the same force. If I push the case down 10 times as hard, the table will also push back 10 times harder. I obviously don't want to do that because I don't want to break the case, but Newton's third law of motion has been true since the beginning of time, for 13.7 billion years. Kaufman refers to this as mirrored reciprocation. The harder you push, the harder things push back. Everything in the inorganic universe works this way. Okay, what about the organic universe? Let's go to bucket number two. This is Whiskey. He's my three-year-old Yorkie. What do you think would happen if I randomly tried to pull his leg? He would get shocked and try to protect himself, right? Probably by biting me in the face or biting my hand. Why? Because I started it and attacked him first. But what if I just sit here and pet him? He's going to love it and give me love back. It's mirror reciprocation in action again. Bucket number two works the same way as bucket number one. What about bucket number three? Every interaction we have with other humans is based on mirrored reciprocation. When someone does something nice for you, you want to return the favor. You mirror their actions back to them. If your colleague buys you lunch, you want to buy them lunch next time. It might sound overly simplistic, but that's exactly the point. And that's why Kaufman's buckets are so profound. Mirrored reciprocation has stood the test of time, and simple is always better than genius. Why? 
because anything that's simple, we can understand, which is why mental models are so powerful. Okay, so mirror reciprocation is a terrific strategy in order to become likable and succeed socially. What does Kaufman teach us about generating wealth and succeeding professionally? Let's look at bucket number one again. What did Albert Einstein claim to be the most powerful force in the universe? He said it's compound interest, which he also called the greatest mathematical discovery of all time. He said that it's the eighth wonder of the world and that it's crucial to understand it. Why? Because those who understand it get paid by it and those who don't pay for it. So what does this mean? Kaufman's definition of compound interest is dogged incremental constant progress over a long time frame. Okay, so that's bucket number one. Now let's go to bucket number two. What's the most powerful force in three and a half billion years of biology? It's evolution, right? Evolution is the process of adaptation and progress over time. It's the reason we're here today, why human beings evolved from monkeys over millions of years. We didn't just get here randomly. Evolution is the organic universe's version of compound interest. It's dogged incremental progress over a long time frame. Now let's look at bucket number three, our 20,000 years of human experience on Earth. How do we develop skills? How do we become good at anything? Let's hear it from Kaufman himself. You want to win a gold medal in the Olympics? You want to learn a musical instrument? You want to learn a foreign language? You want to build Berkshire Hathaway? What's the formula? Dogged, incremental, constant progress over a very long time. The problem that human beings have is we don't like to be constant. Think of each one of those terms. Dogged, incremental, constant progress over a very long time. Nobody wants to be constant. We're the functional equivalent of Sisyphus pushing his boulder up the mountain. You push it up halfway and you go, ah, I'll come back and do this another time. Let's go. Got this great idea, I'm going to really work hard on it. And you push it up halfway, ah, you know, I'll get back to this next one. This is the human condition. In geometric terms, this is called variance drain. Whenever you interrupt the constant increase above a certain level of threshold, you lose compounding. You're no longer on the log curve. You fall back onto a linear curve or, God forbid, a step curve down. You have to be constant. How many people do you know that are constant in what they do? I know a couple, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. Everybody wants to be rich like Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. I'm telling you how they got rich. They were constant. They were not intermittent. Isn't that powerful? It's so simple yet so impactful. I could listen to this guy talk all day. So how do we apply mirrored reciprocation and compound interest to our daily lives? Kaufman calls it going positive, going first, and being constant over a long period of time. What does this mean? Well, as humans, we have a tendency to complain and expect good things to happen to us. Rather than being proactive and putting ourselves out there, we sit around hoping for luck to find us. Dogs are absolute masters at the craft of going first. Whenever I come home from work, what do you think Whiskey does? He sprints across the apartment and greets me with the utmost enthusiasm. What do I give him in return? Everything. I give him food, shelter, toys, treats, and endless love. It's mirrored reciprocation. Whiskey doesn't even have to greet me for a long time, just 10 seconds or so, then he can go back to doing whatever he was before, you know, being, being lazy on the couch. But he has to be consistent with his greetings every single time. Kaufman uses the elevator example to portray this. You're standing in front of an elevator, the door's open, and inside the elevator is one solitary stranger. You've never met this person before in your whole life. You walk into the elevator, you have three choices for how you're going to behave when you walk into this elevator. Choice number one, you can smile and say good morning. And I say, at least in California, if you do that, 98% of the time the person will smile and say good morning back. You can test it, okay? My guess is you're going to find 98% of the time that people say good morning. Choice number two, you can walk in and you can scowl and hiss at this stranger in the elevator. And they have no idea why you're scowling and hissing at them. And I say 98% of the time, they may not hiss back at you, but they will scowl back at you. And option number three, this is where the wisdom comes. You can walk into the elevator and you can do nothing. And what do you get 98% of the time if you walk into an elevator and you do nothing from that stranger in the elevator? What do they do? Nothing. It's mirrored reciprocation, isn't it? But what did you have to do? You go first. And you're going to get back whatever you put out there. This is why these bars are full of people at 2 a.m. drowning their sorrow. Knocking down these drinks. What's the world going to give me something, man? When am I going to get mine? Well, what did you ever do? 
Did you ever get up in the morning and smile at the world? No. You either did nothing, or you scowled and hissed at the world. You're getting back exactly what you would expect to get back if you understood how the world really works. That's why we study multidisciplinary things, right? So if this is so simple and obvious, why don't we do this more often? Imagine this scenario. A friend offers to flip a coin and give you $20 if it lands on heads, but if it lands on tails, you owe her $20. Would you take the bet? If you're like most people, you wouldn't. Why? Because humans are loss averse. We hate losing. This is something Nobel Prize winner and behavioral economist Daniel Kahneman taught us with his prospect theory. There's an asymmetry between the human desire for gain and the human desire to avoid loss. And so we avoid saying hi to the stranger in the elevator because we don't want to risk losing. Even if there's a 98% chance that we'll benefit from saying hi to the stranger, we don't want to do it because there's still a 2% chance that the person tells us to F off, which will make us feel terrible. And we obviously want to avoid those negative emotions. But once we understand this, we can actually do something about it. We've got one lifetime and the opportunity cost of not going positive and not going first is simply too high. As I reflect on my own experiences, I realize that I've struggled with this my entire life. I always hated having to be the one to go first, to take initiative, whether it was making a new friend or approaching a girl I liked. Why didn't things just come to me? Well, it turns out the world doesn't work that way for most of us. My parents are Indian, I was born and raised in Sweden, I went to an international high school in Norway and have spent most of my adult life in the US. I've met people from all over the world and while I didn't realize this until recently, almost every interesting encounter I've had in my life has been the result of going out of my way by going first. That's how I met my fiance. I approached her at a party in college. It's how I met some of my best friends. I randomly asked one of them if he spoke Hindi while we were shoulder to shoulder in a public bathroom. It's how I got my first job out of college. I cold emailed up to 100 alums who had a job I wanted to land. And it's how I started my first company. I left my high paying finance job to launch something completely unknown. I'm glad Kaufman has provided me with a bulletproof mental model and framework to stack the odds in my favor. So ask that girl or guy out, start that YouTube channel, launch that startup, buy that colleague at lunch, cold email your favorite author or role model. Whatever it is you're trying to achieve, put some positive energy into the world by going first, do it consistently over a long period of time, and soon enough you will get what you deserve. There's no chance this approach will fail. It might take some time, but it won't fail. Kaufman has proven it to us by studying the greatest data set possible. When in doubt, just remember his three buckets. And if you're trying to explore a new idea and wondering if it will work, stress test it through the lens of physics, biology, and human psychology. If you found value in this video, feel free to share it with a friend and hit that subscribe button. I also highly, highly recommend listening to Kaufman's full talk, which I've linked in the description. It's 45 minutes long, but it might be the best investment of time you'll ever make. Thanks for hanging with me and see you next time.